welcome to our show film talk with aj dean i'm aj dean your host and tonight i am super excited and super thrilled we have from las vegas a singer a pianist and songwriter the very very well known and established nicholas cole hey nicholas let's give you a super hi aj welcome. how are you thank how you for you? having me tonight yeah i know yeah, I'm, I'm so, I'm so to excited have... to be on this on this podcast. <laughs> Me too. I'm super thrilled to have you. You know, you're such a super nice guy and you. you're incredibly talented. And Jeff and I, my husband, has seen you and heard your beautiful music and your beautiful singing. And it's like no one else. You have your own style and it's unique. And um, we'll we'll get into that we'll get into that as well because it, you come from a line a long line of wonderful singers and musicians. But let's start it. Let's start let's start talking about um, first of all. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. So am I. And um, Nick, thank you. Say, say again. I'm sorry. Thank you for having me. I would never have thought that you would even think of having me. I'm so very, very excited and, and honored to be on your podcast. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's such an honor to have you. You know, when Jeff and I saw you at the Italian American Club, I just have to say it was just such an incredible um, a moment, an evening. And you know, you are, you transform music. It's, you're so passionate about it. People sitting there can feel it, and you change the world with your music. So I just want to thank you, first of all, and um, let's talk about you. Let's get into it. So where were you born? Um, and talk. tell us about, um, let me go to my notes here. Where were you born, and where did you grow up, Nicholas? Well, I had a great childhood life. I had a great childhood. I grew up in Chicago, maybe maybe three minutes, four minutes away from Wrigley Field. So Wrigley Field, I'm a huge Cubs fan, as as it being. But um, I grew up around Wrigley Field, at, and with my with my friends, we used to ride our bikes um, and go, go to Wrigley Field and, and, you know, catch home run balls. And um, my, my child life was amazing growing up in Chicago. I'm still today, my father and I and grandfather, we're still, now I'm watching with my kids, the Cubs, as we only won one, one World Series in the past 108 years. So it was a huge thing for us in 2016 when that happened. But um, I had a great, great upbringing and being also, also being around uh, DePaul University, the college, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of music music around my a lot of music entities around my neighborhood where I grew up too. So that's where I jumped into taking uh, Suzuki lessons uh, uh, in DePaul University, where where I started. Incredible, incredible. So already you um, were in Chicago. What a great I'm gonna city! Just jump I mean, uh, real quick to the great photos that we have on. Uh, on screen here. This is your family. It looks like Disneyland and you're such yeah. a family guy. Your family means so much to you and you have a beautiful family. In fact, I've met your wife and your daughter. Tell us a little bit about your family, how much they mean to you and, and maybe about this photo in Disneyland. Oh, my daughter loves Disneyland. She's actually was just talking about it a couple hours ago that the tickets are on sale, that I should buy them now. Anyway, <laughs> But we 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 probably will work on that. We get a break at the at the club at the Italian American Club every year for like two weeks, so we could do um, you know deep cleaning at the club. So we do have that little two weeks off, and we probably will go to Disneyland. But my family is everything. Family is everything to me. That's my that's my mojo to go to work every day and put on a smiley face. And even if you know musicians have ups ups and downs as going, and you know it's hard to transition from leaving a house with five kids in it and then just, just to go into go into the Italian American club and boom, it's just a switch. You know, it, it really is just a switch. But doing that so many years and I learned how to, you know, how to cope and cope with that and, and also just to change that switch all the time, you know. But family is everything to me. My wife is everything to me. I mean she's the one who gave me all this all this joy and and my family and my kids, and she's got the more harder job than than me 
by by hundred million times. She's got twenty jobs in one day, with with uh, everybody eating on a different timeline. And every, well, you know, like my old, our, our older twins that are now eighteen, they're they're working and they're in school too. So everybody's in like different schools and different times. And but you know, um, that's what that's what this is about, you know. But the but the trick to it is just having a good balance of uh, the music music up here and having a good strong mentality um and then also having a good woman behind you as well you know absolutely 100 percent. and she's beautiful and she keeps the glue together so as it's, well it, it's really really important to have a good support team don't you think nicholas well it's, it's i got really lucky because let me tell you something my wife her father and her grandfather are some of the greatest musicians in in you know um ah some some great musicians so i mean her her family comes from a great long line of his musicians and so do mine but the funny the, the silver lining here the funny silver lining thing here is that her father and my father became best friends and were traveling the travel their whole lives you know and her father's a drummer my father's a piano player a singer and uh like i like and i took off the my father but so that's how we got to know each other. They they ended up getting a job in Florida, in South Florida, where where we'll get to that. But we we ended up getting a job in South Florida, so we ended up living and you know living with each other. You know, living not not under the same roof, but like going to school with each other and being with you know traveling as a family together. So we're together from sixteen years old. We're like high school sweethearts. So that's uh that's a huge huge deal that her that her that she understands the music the music part of it that's a tough one you know I, i'm not gonna lie it's a tough it's a tough business a very show business is not for everybody but um uh, i'm lucky enough to have a woman who understands the, the show business and music business and you know so we come from a long line of of of, um, of our parents um living and dying and breathing music and and also using that to pay you know pay their way you know um you know so that's exactly what i do right now you know amazing amazing and what town did you meet oh we well like i said our, our, my, my father my father actually put the the drumsticks in her father's hands my father was my father's still alive now still today but my father is in my book um in my book one of the greatest musicians that that I know. And when they were at a very young age, when they were little, they were like 12, 13 years old growing up. And they and her father came, you know, my father, my 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 my, my grandmother was a stickler on my on my father. I mean, my father would have to practice 20 hours a day. You know, my father, my my grandmother was like, you know, <laughs> either you do this or you're not, you know. So his friends would the only the only way he they would be able to hang out with him as if they were in the room practicing with him. So one day her, her father brings over the guitar and my father says, you know, I don't think the guitar is for you. Why don't you try the drums? And from then on, from 12 years old, he's played, he played the drums and that's how they know each other. And that's how, that's how we met, you know, through, through, through the, all that stuff. What a wonderful story. And let's, let's go into your um can you tell us a little bit about your father okay. and your grandfather because it goes back and you and this oh. is in your genes this is in your it's dna blood. tell us a little bit about their lives as musicians and oh. and their ba the background well my father my uh, my great grand oh, my great great grandfather they're all they're all um they all live and breathe by by the instrument they were all they were my great grandfather was a great great violinist and then my my grandfather was a wonderful tremendous violin player and he actually wanted me the funny one of my funny stories here is he wanted me because i was the first i was like the first um i was the oldest out of out of our family growing up and my father being the great musician as he is and he, he, he being well known in chicago you know my father was very well known musician through the whole to a whole uh, Chicago music scene. But my grandfather wanted to show me the violin first. He wanted to see if I could play the violin because it was his biggest joy for me to play the violin. I didn't really, I didn't, I don't know if I, I didn't know if I loved it then or liked it then, but 
But I could tell you what happened. What happened was the most funniest thing. And I think this really just led my uh, just led my future into where I was going. So my my grandfather put the 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 violin into my hands. So I'm practicing for months and months, and I'm 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 like four years, five years old at this time, and I'm playing the the, the violin, and I'm getting ready for this concert for this con concert at a church, uh, Saint Alphonsus Church in, in in Chicago, and it's for like um, it's for like they do a celebration for the Blessed Mary every year. And um, so my my grandfather's getting me ready for this concert and I'm playing the violin. I'm like literally five years old playing the violin, getting me ready for this. And I, I learned, I practice for the past four or five months to be in, in the orchestra. And when the concert came, when the concert came, the day of the concert came, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited to play. And I'm in the back, I'm in the back playing, you know, and I'm like, why am I in the back for, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be in front. So I make my way, I make my way into the front. And this was the funniest story ever because I make my way into the front <laughs> and, and I'm, and, and I wanted to be like in the front, you know, where everybody's watching. I'm going, Shoo -doo 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 -doo, I'm acting and I'm playing and I'm playing and I'm not playing anything, but I'm just acting really good. You oh. know, I'm acting really good and I'm acting like I'm playing and, and here my grandfather Taps me on the on, on the head and my shoulder with his bowl, tapping me. Says, get get the hell out of here! Right, get back here right now! He pulls me and there's like video of this stuff when I was a little kid, and I was and so we so he gets me in the car and he's so mad at me. He's so mad at me, my grandfather because that's not a way a violinist, you know, does that old thing. And, and I'm jumping <laughs> and I'm doing this in front of all the older guys oh. that are. In, that are uh, from the older guys that are, are are in this in this orchestra for many many years and they're playing the violin many many years. I have much respect for them. So here, um, <laughs> he gets me in the car. He uh, <clears throat> he takes me home and he tells my father. He says, "Your son is not meant for the violin." <laughs> and this is coming from my father has the utmost, utmost respect for my grandfather, right? Uh, which is on my mom's side. Wow. So my this is my mother's father. Mm -hmm. And and he uh he says he's not <laughs> for the, but he is for the piano. My father, my grandfather says to uh, my father, but he is, I think you should show him the piano because he has the personality to be in mm -hmm. front. And I don't think he'll ever be a violin player and have the, the patience for it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it ended up going into my brother's hands. The violin ended up going into my brother's hands. My brother is a phenomenal violinist. Wow. And so that's how uh, that's how that, that that was just that little funny story that that's amazing. Uh, that's how I went way into to learning the piano and I went into Suzuki lessons yeah. at the Paul like I said and and my father took me on from there but funny thing is is my father and I could never sit by the piano together. Oh really? I, know, I always had to have private teachers. Oh. We never got along. We never got along. I mean, but. But away from that piano, I mean, we could be reading each other's minds, mm -hmm. music. Like, it's so funny because we know we, we read each other's minds with the musicality. But when we sit by the piano when I was younger, we he never, he still to this day, will say I never taught Nicholas a note or a chord, which I'm very, very proud of. Because my father, in my book, like I said, is is one of the greatest musicians and songwriters I've ever, I mean, close to Michelle Legrand and I brought Bacharach for me. That's how close my father is to being in that caliber of, of music. Yes. And, you know, he being an artist, he knew he that lessons for you would be the best way. But I'm way. lucky I found that because that wasn't, that just wasn't for me. And I felt that in my heart. The violin was no, I love the violin and yeah. it's the hardest instrument out there wow. next to the piano, I think. But um, that the violin was not for me. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. so glad my grandfather found that out early at an early stage of my life because I got to study from early, you know, and, and take it on and and really put my head to it and, and put my brain to it from a young age and, and study. From, you and, did and, great. Uh, you did well, yeah. very, very Quick well on this and arts entertainment. You were voted best. Was it best lounge act? Yeah. In 2023. I don't know how the hell that happened, but I I, I, I don't know. Congratulations. I, I think I voted for you because 
You, Thank you, Adrian. You absolutely, and I'd vote for you again. And but this is quite oh. an achievement. This is a magazine. This is in a Las Vegas magazine, and it was published. And there you are. Your name's there. And how did it feel to first of all congratulations on that because well deserved, well well deserved. And how do you feel about that? That people see you, they acknowledge wow. you, that, that all the things your your dad and your grandpa said you know, um, keep at it, keep doing the hard work, it, it's paid off. How did it make you feel? Well, just by Vegas being called the entertainment capital of the world and then being number one lounge act, and when there's so many lounge acts in this town, you know, you got, I mean, I, I could just name on and on and on. You got the Ashley Poolers, you got the, uh, I mean, Ashley Fuller is amazing. I love the way she sings. I mean, Ronnie Rose to Zoe Bowie. I mean, Zoe Bowie won this award many times, but just for me to have it once is uh, enough for me and just um, very, uh, very soothing for my soul. And and to know that I, I did that uh, and I, I won that means a lot to me. It just, you know, means a lot to me because it shows how work pays off. You really do. You're a consummate Switch professional. The, and the picture now to... Um, I, actually, you know what? I want to talk about this great photo shoot right here. <laughs> this is your twin sons, right? This is. Yeah. Tell us about. They're, they're our oldest twins. They're 18 now. Yeah. And we, we, so this is a great story too. So we got a chance. So her father, like I said, her father's a drummer, right? Uh, her, her father, Howard, is a great drummer. And we ended up getting a gig, just me, me and her father, as we're, uh, so we ended up getting this great gig in uh, in Newport Beach, California, called "Putting on the Ritz." The real "Putting on the Ritz," you know, the song "Putting on the Ritz." Ba 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 ba. Not putting on the Ritz. Well, we we got the the house gig there, and we were performing in Newport Beach for uh, we we had that gig almost almost like nine years, and and so I said, you know, why we're here? We got these nice looking twins, and they they got a great personality. Let's, um, so Ruben. I called uh, Tara Rubin is uh, one of the great casting directors out of New York. And so I said, you know, Tara, I'm, I'm here. You know, she was, she was also the casting director of Jersey Boys. And um, yeah, so I called her up after I did an audition for Jersey Boys, but I didn't get a part as a Jersey boy. She offered me one of those, one, one of the, another part. And I was like, oh, I really want to be a Jersey boy. But uh, you had to go to like Frankie Valley Cat and all this stuff. And Frank, that was treacherous. I don't know how those guys did it, but they did it. Make a long story short, we we go to Newport Beach and we're living there. And uh, Tara, Rubin hooks up, uh, Tara Rubin hooks us up with a wonderful um, manager for them. And then they also got into a wonderful agency, CCSD. Which is uh one of the one of the top agencies in in in, in L.A. So we started. Um, she started to call calling us like every day. The you know you gotta be here at Milk Studios eight o'clock, and then you got in the morning. Then you gotta be at this one at eight. And then it's, this is also a day of work for me too. So we would drive my wife and I from Newport Beach to L.A. in the most treacherous traffic, four hour four hour days to get there and back. You know, so we'd go there with the boys. And on the way there, we'd be rehearsing lines and her rehearsing, you know, her stuff that what they're gonna say in the auditioning rooms. And they um they just got into it. They like fell in love with it. They loved it. And and one of one of the twins were on target for two years. Um yeah, wow. one of the boys yeah, yeah, for two years for um for Speedo, for like the Speedo products, for like the um the jet, the the, the vest, you know, the, the the safety vest and like wow. goggles and stuff like that. So they 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 did. They, they had a lot of experience in that and stuff. It was a wonderful experience. And and all those headshots that they took were wonderful. And um, uh, just a really, really good experience for them. You know, that was a good experience for us and them uh, going to those studios and watching them audition in front of all the big producers. And, and, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was a fun time in our life. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? And now, do they have aspirations to being, you know, to becoming actors? Because, you know, there's uh, casting directors out there and auditions, you know, like on backstage. And, um, you know, that's one um, casting place online. Are they interested in that? Well, 
they're already 18 years old already. They they want to they they want to buy cars and they want to get into you know that's what they they're, what they're doing now. But my daughter's interested in this. My daughter Tatum is interested in becoming a, an actress. So we uh, we're how work exciting! <laughs> I did want to talk about when you grew up. You went to Las Vegas Academy of Performing Arts in 1994 and 1995. And then you moved to South Florida, where you attended J.P. Taravella High School and finished music studies at the Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton. Yeah. What what cool things happened to you at both of those high schools? Um, life changing. All I can say is life changing. Life changing, even more so with the violin story that I tell you about, because eventually I was going to find the piano and sing eventually i think um because i was so i was I, my father would come home from the studio and i would just just zone in on his studio work and i would listen to it for hours and hours and hours and i i knew i was going into music some way way or than ever but as far as um as far as what happened to me at las vegas academy was life changing when i when i when i auditioned to get into las vegas academy i auditioned as a classical piano player I did not know one. When I say one, I don't. I don't. I did not know one American song or an American song from so anything. I didn't know how to play an American song on the piano, like even just a Beatles song, you know, or something like that. Nothing. I just knew classical music, and my 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 um, my director was Mary Straub. She was. Uh, she's a uh, wonderful. She's still in the Las Vegas community, music community. <clears throat> and she's a wonderful violinist herself. And uh, she, I was selected to be in this class that had 25 other pianists. And there was actually like 25 pianos in this room. I mean, when we would start off with our practicing and um, like doing our scales, can you imagine 25 real pianos doing scales and doing even the Nutcracker? We did the Nutcracker too. Uh, but there was this one particular day that is a wonderful musician. His name is, uh, he lives here in town too. We went to school together. His name is uh, Eric Runquist. Well, one day he's in jazz band as well, this kid. So we're the same age and he's in jazz band. I'm, I don't really know nothing. I, don't, I really don't know anything about jazz at this time or, or this sort of music. So so here he um, he says, you know, Nick, I know, I know you've got, I know you've got a good feel because your dad is a musician. You know, I, when my when I made this audition, my father came with me as well, you know, and he was talking to the to the um, to the professors there too. So they knew he was a musician. So I was in I was I got in this wonderful school, this Las Vegas Academy. It's just one of my great great memories. So um, Eric Runquist, Eric Runquist gives me this sheet of music, and it's a sheet of music. Um, it's a jazz song called "A Night in Tunisia." Oh wow. So, um, so I, I said, yeah, I can read it. He says, Nicholas, can you please read this for me? I mean, I, I don't really quite get it, you know? So I, I go sit by the piano and this is after our class, after our class, we're all conversating, talking, the doors open. It's uh, the class is over. And I go and I go play this, this song for him. And as I'm playing the song, as I'm reading it, like, like, okay, this is like this. Well, okay, whatever. The jazz band director is is walking past my past my classroom door, okay. Oh, wow! And I'm in this classical class, so um, the jazz band director is walking past my class, and and as I got done playing the song, he said he comes over to me. He says, "Um, do you do you do you know anything about jazz? Do you play jazz? I mean, how do you know this? I mean, how do you play?" I said, "No, I just Eric just gave me the song to play, and I'm playing it right now. I just whatever." <laughs> he said, "Well, you got a good feel for this stuff. You know, you got a good feel for this. I think you would. I think you would love this. You know, I like this stuff." So here, there was something missing in my soul. There was something missing in my soul. I'm, I can't. I cannot lie. Um, classical music is in my heart deeply, but it wasn't my full heart. So here I am. Um, here I'm, I'm. I'm. The jazz band director comes in and he says, uh, "Listen, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell your teacher you're gonna come with me." And you're gonna come with me, and I'm gonna. He didn't tell me where he's taking me, but I'm gonna just go talk with your teacher for a second, Mary Straub. And uh, he asks her, ask her if, he, if I could go with him, and I go take a walk with him to to the to the to the jazz band um, 
to the band room. <clears throat> and he says, I want you to sit right here. I want you to sit right here, right behind the band by the drums and the piano and the bass and all that. And I'm sitting there and they go, one, two, three, four. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I got, I'm all goosebumps. I'm completely all goosebumps. And I'm like, I like, I can't even, I'm having like an anxiety attack. You know, I, I I never felt anything like this ever before. And, you know, at this time, I'm about 16 years old, you know. So I get, he gets done. He, they get done with the song that they play. He says, well, what do you think? And I just was completely blown away. And from that day on, I did not look back at classical music. I transitioned my way into jazz. And, and yeah, that's stuff like that happened. Wow. Happens like that for a reason. Yeah, uh, perfect timing that the teacher was walking by and also that incredible moment that you had that experience. You knew I'll it never was forget that, right? I'll never forget that. No, I'll never forget that feeling because I knew that's what it was. That's what I was missing. That's the little thing that was, I was missing in my soul, you know, and uh, and I, I, not that I never looked back. I don't mean it that. I mean, I never I, I never really took any classical gigs anymore, you know. I would just, I just, I, 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 I Mary, Mary Straub said, no, that's your, that, I think that that's your way. She thought, she's seen that in me too. But I transitioned my way into jazz band and I always was in choir. I'm like, uh, even when I went to uh, Fremont, Fremont, um, I went to middle school here. I was in pre, I was in choir and every year I found myself uh, also making it into like honor choir. So I always had the, the yeah. So I was making honor choir when I didn't even realize like like how big this is, you know. <laughs> my, my choir teacher would tell me, "You want to be an honor choir? I mean, you can audition for it and try it. I think you should." And I would, and I would, and I would make it every year into honor choir, and um, and that's how it just formed. That's how it just formed, just like that. That's yeah. it. Just happened like that. You are a natural, you know. Um, uh, Frank Sinatra had this. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. had this. Dean Martin okay. had this. I can't even pull them to those guys in the, he, that category. Uh, hey, I have to say this: you're playing in the same air, the club that they used to, the Italian American Club. It's so prestigious. I love it. I adore it. Um, whenever I go there uh, to Vegas, I, I want to visit the Italian American Club, um, and. And you know when you have it, you have it. It's that, it's that feeling that you had when you knew intuitively, Nicholas, right then and there, that wow, jazz and this whole um, feeling. This is this is what I'm meant to do, and it was clear to you and everyone else too in the whole room. <laughs> you know, you know that, that that's why he took me to the jazz band because he's seen when I was playing that song, how I felt, and I expressed myself on the piano, and there was a way to, exp to express yourself there in that song. Okay, but uh, when I just felt that, when they put that, that jazz, when they play, when they, one, two, three, four, and boom, I just was like, oh my gosh, this, what was I missing? Where, 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 where was I all this time? Yes, so. yes, and I agree. And, you know, speaking of uh, wonderful things and the Italian American uh, club, we have a couple of photos on screen of you with some very special people. Can you tell us about these two great photos, who they are and yeah. take it away. I could tell you, could tell you um, Bob Sachs right there on the right. Bob Sachs is, is um, the greatest guy that I, he put me, I mean, I came to Las Vegas when I was 20, 21 years old and he took me on and showed me everybody and, and that's and 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 when I went into Caesar's Palace when I got my residency resin, residency there, um, he was performing there as well, and he just took a very huge liking from me to me from a little from from a young age, and that man just has a lot. just has a lot to do with my success in Las Vegas. You know what, what a great photo, and he um, he had um, got the residency at Caesar's Palace. Wow, that was after Newport Beach, right? And then you went to, yeah. you, you went to Florida. That was before. That yeah, was before that. That was before. So Newport Beach, and then you moved to Florida, and you were at the, that very famous, where Frank Sinatra, the Fountain Blue? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, put, yeah, we performed there a little bit. And, um, but I I finished a lot of my musical studies in in Las Vegas, in, in Florida. You know, when I went to, to, when I, see, when we moved here, my father moved here from Florida, to here 
to play for Buddy Greco as his piano player. So it was a kind of win-win situation because I was able to go to Las Vegas Academy and my father was also performing on the strip. But then my father got a beautiful gig in, in South Florida. So we ended up, up moving to to uh, Florida. That's where I, I really got to know Danielle a little more, my wife, Danielle, because because the, the gig was with her with my father and her father together. So that's how we're together from little kids. You know, and and then and then uh, that's when I met that's when I met two of the greatest teachers. That, well, Miss uh, Miss Mary uh, Miss Lori Slade uh, is was another great thing happened to me while I was in school. Um, so I get pulled out of Las Vegas Academy after after my like I'm going into junior year. I get pulled out of Las Vegas Academy because my dad gets this wonderful job in South Florida. So uh, I was a little, I got to be honest with you, I was a little depressed about it. I was a little, uh, I, I hate to use the word depressed, but I was a little sad about it um, because I was leaving such a great school. This school was unbelievable. I mean, everybody was into music and everybody was on the same page in Las Vegas Academy. But when I, when my father put me into this other school called J.P. Terravella, I'm, I'm at J.P. Terravella. I think it's my first weekend. And um, it's, you know, lunch hour, everybody's got their friends and I'm walking around by myself. I got no friends, you know, just left like the school fame. The school is just like, like equally as, as cool as fame, you know, as, so I'm like walking around by myself and I find myself in, in the theater, in the theater, in the theater on the, on the stage. I find this little door that opens up to the, uh, to the theater on stage. So me being a West Side Story lover, I am a huge fan of West Side Story. I go, I'm thinking that there's nobody in this in this um, theater. And I'm thinking no, and there, nobody in here. And so I started singing Maria. I just met a girl named Maria. Well, there was a damn office right behind the uh, the curtain, the, uh, the the back curtain, backstage. There was this little office, and 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 this wonderful teacher that I still keep in. We all still keep in touch with her. Because she's a, she plays a huge role in a lot of. Kind of like looking lives. behind, I see she, she was looking at me, you know. So she said, "So where'd you come from?" I said, "Well, I, I just came from this wonderful school, Las Vegas Academy," and I was kind of down. She seen I was down and out about you know I left, and she said, "Well, you're gonna love this, you know. You're gonna, I want you to join musical theater." <laughs> well, well, I ended up joining musical theater, and she ended up changing my damn life forever to mm -hmm. another life changing thing. Where she showed me musical theater and uh, and she 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 brought my my um my uh, my intuition about the stage you know using the stage and using my performance my, right yeah performance? performing yeah she yeah. bring that out of me and um and my wonderful jazz band director there too Mr Mark Humphreys. But, this um, gentleman um it looks like it's at the Italian American Club with the yellow yeah Joey. Who is that? And tell us about that. Well, I call that 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 is Joey Zaza from The Godfather Part Three, Joey Mantelia, and he, uh, yeah, that's Joey Zaza. Oh my he, gosh, I we he, love he's him. From, he's from Chicago, this yeah. guy. So he, we started to talk to each other, <laughs> and turns out he um he knew my grandfather's uh my grandfather's doctor. He knew my grand. I mean, um, it's just it, it, he he becomes fan as well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah yeah it turned out um so he was talking about chicago and then my father where my father used to perform and some of the places there so we were that that's a great picture i love that picture that, that's, uh, it, it's so great it's so great and it's such a great time and uh what a fun time that yeah. and and so much in common and uh you look so happy i just i just absolutely love this we're going to go through a few more photos speaking um, you know you mentioned the godfather and oh my gosh, you know, that was the very first movie I ever watched. I was five years old and my dad took me to the theater. I loved that movie. I love all of them. And yeah. I love I love Casino. That's one of my favorite all time favorite Robert De Niro. I mean, come on. Um, I love that. I also love yeah. Al Pacino, right? Uh, Al Pacino. Oh, I love Heat. That's another Favorite oh, another mine. great one. Another great one. Another we were great. actually a couple of my friends and I we were in the part where Sharon's uh, the movie The Casino where Sharon Stone throws up all the chips. We were in the background 
And yeah, that, that's just how much I love that movie too as well. But The Godfather too is, is something very, um, you know, the, just, just you know, Fran I had a chance to meet Francis Ford Coppola. Oh my gosh, and I've 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 bought his wine. That's about it. But tell us, tell us, Nick. I have a signed I have a signed wine bottle by him. Yeah, I have a signed wine. It's on my it's on my page. But so um, I get this gig. I get this gig to go play in Sinatra's house in Palm Springs, California. They did not want to tell me who was going to be there, but you know, being in law in LA, I knew a lot about the the, the secret to you know, of all that stuff. Anyways, but <clears throat> I go into this. I think it was my third or fourth time playing at at Sinatra's house in Palm Springs. So I go in this time, and the guest speaker is Francis Ford Coppola. That's crazy. So he. So the funny thing is the great, the great, the great thing about this then story is, is that Francis Ford Coppola also made this other movie called The Outsiders. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Well, there's a wonderful song, and the, there's a wonderful song in this in this movie that my family and I love. We love this this song that's in it. Turns out, turns out that um, it was Francis Ford Coppola's. Um, father that that wrote the song and Stevie Wonder was the one Stevie Wonder was the one to put the words to it and, and to the lyrics into it and sing it so I'm over there playing playing all the songs from the Godfather but then I transition 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 into this other song called stay gold he's called stay gold and he um he so I play I'm playing it it's coming through the system and I can see him looking over you know I see him looking over so as I play in it, he points over to me. He says, "Come on, come over here and sit down by him." So the the his his assistant comes, grabs me, says, "You know, Mr. Coppola, I'd like to have you sit by his table." So I'm sitting there with with, with Mr. Coppola and his wife, and he says, "How do you know that song?" He says, "How do you know that song?" I said, uh, "The song is I love this song. I mean, from a little boy. I mean, this is like a if you know anything about the Outsiders, the and, and you know the." Um, it's just, it's a guy. It's a it's great really story, great, isn't it? Great story, yes. So I played, he said, do you know who wrote it? I said, your father. I said, your father wrote this song. You know, so I said, man, he said, that's so great. You played that for me. I, I loved it. I said, and I know, you know, Stevie Wonder wrote the lyrics to it. And um, so I played that for him. And then he gets into, um, then he started to do the, um, the uh, he started to do the, uh, the talking for the, because um, he was the guest speaker for talking about the godfather and how the godfather how his producers wanted the movie to be made in the 70s and be filmed in kansas city and they wanted Lawrence olivier to play marlon brando's part oh wow and mr coppola's wife no uh, 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 Lawrence olivier he's, he's english he, he you know he, he's has got an accent and everything <laughs> but um back then mr brando marlon brando had a very very um uh, what's the word I could use there? Was very reckless mm -hmm. on on, mm -hmm. the, on 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 the sets, you know. Yeah. So Marlon Brando, Marlon Brando, you know, they the, the producers did not want Marlon Brando because of his recklessness. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't show up on time. He'd leave. He could, you know, whatever he did. And wow. but Francis Ford Coppola knew this was the guy, you know, that this was the guy to play that part. And yeah. back then. He made he made Marlon Brando put up a million dollars from the beginning of the film to the end of the film. Wow. And this is straight from Francis Ford's mouth to me. Made him put up, and back then a million dollars is probably like maybe twenty million dollars now. Yeah, maybe maybe more than that. So for Marlon Brando to put up a million bucks to do to do that movie to not be reckless from the beginning to the end was a pretty cool story amazing amazing and such a wonderful moment that uh you got to talk with him and and discuss the godfather and play that song so beautifully and you know i love you know jeff and i we love francis ford coppola wine it's delicious it's delicioso and also i respect him so much as a, a not as you know not just as a fine director that he is but he's a I know he's a family man you know because he he loves his family as well um so I, I just I'm so excited to hear that 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 you had that experience yeah, with great experience great experience there really truly beautiful oh, beautiful that, that's, that's that's pretty cool so so um I, I just love this so much Nicholas and I know everyone's going to be so interested hearing about this 
because you've been places that people wish they could have been. Um, huh. So speaking of movies, I mentioned a few like Heat and Casino, who I, I adore, I love. Um, I also love some of the Dina Martin films too. You know, Dina Martin, um, Dean Martin's daughter. She's yes, in some, yes. she's in some yeah. Westerns and in uh, some great, great films. Um, yeah, but my question is to you, what three films would you recommend to our audience? Jeez, I'm such a, I'm such a music, I'm, I'm such a music buff and I'm such a movie buff that so many, so many, um, you know, when I, when I watch movies, I mean, if it has a great score to it, yeah. I'm really in love with it. But some of, you know, I, I love, um, I love The Woman in Red with, with Gene Wilder yeah. uh, and Kelly LeBrock, also because of some of the great music that was in it. You know, um, ah, some of my favorite music is in that. Um, also, like movies like uh, Cinema Paradiso, mm. um, Ennio Mar 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 um, uh Umbrellas of Sherberg, oh. uh, Michelle Legrand, all the Michelle Legrand, all all the Michelle Legrand with, with movies like uh, Best Friends, uh, How to Keep the Music Playing, is in that movie with with Burt Reynolds and Goldie Hawn. That's probably one of my favorite movies because. That's one of my favorite songs, and my that is my favorite song. Number one, how they keep the music playing, and then one of my favorite movies is is probably Best Friends. It's not that great of a movie, but it is. It, it's got a great um a great score to it. The, the music score to it is is Michelle Legrand, you know, and and the Bergmans. Yes, and I love all that you said and you mentioned. And did you, do you feel that um we need more movies with, with great with music? Yes. Yeah, with with great soundtracks. Remember, we used to buy the soundtracks. They used to sell them, and we were talking about The Godfather. That has a beautiful soundtrack. We need more movies like that, don't you think, Nicholas? Talk oh, to well, us. That, that's to funny us. you say that because I'm actually working on something. I'm actually working on something. I'm in control of doing some um, a soundtrack to this movie. That that's oh. coming in. Wow, really? Maybe, maybe we could talk about this on our next, maybe some other time, but yes. it's in the works. It's in the works. It's 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 coming along, and some of my father's music will be in in this in this movie. Amazing it's about baseball and faith. Oh, I love it. All I can I... say about it right now, but it's how... about faith and baseball. How exciting! And I can't wait to hear. Let's more. Talk about a couple of these photos on on the screen here. You've got uh, you're you're in the middle of of uh flanked by a very handsome and beautiful oh, yeah. couple and then uh this uh, another gentleman in the italian american club tell us about them okay so in the in the picture with what i'm in, i'm in the picture with buddy v lisa and buddy velastro when we got done with uh when me and howard danielle's father got done with uh putting on the ritz in, in newport beach uh buddy v buddy v's people reached out to us there because they knew that it was closing in 2014, uh, putting on the Ritz, and he asks us if we come back to Vegas and open up his restaurant. So we were there from 2015 to Jesus, just till uh, recently. We've been involved with with Buddy V and his his places for the past uh, nine years. You know, wow, so, um, incredible. Uh, and, then, and then the next picture over there is uh, Michael McDonald. Michael and that was, McDonald. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Wow, it's a it, it's it's a crazy picture for me because when because this was a Sunday night. Okay, mind you, I work at the Italian American Club Wednesday through Sunday. Um, this was a Sunday night, and obviously Sunday night it's my like Friday. My voice is getting a little. I'm already it's already through the week. I walk in six o'clock. I start six o'clock. I walk in and he and do and Mikey Mike, Michael McDonald and the whole Doobie Brothers are sitting. 10 feet in front of me. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like shaking like a leaf, you know, I wish they wouldn't even have told me that he was there to be honest, but turns out, turns out, I thought, I thought, I thought in my head, I said, what would my father do? You know, what would my father do? And, and my, and my, and I, and I said, you know, I, my father would say, play every great song in the book. Don't show off. Just play nice songs behind him. Let him have nice a nice dinner experience, dining experience. And turns out, after he was done, comes by me and says, "Nicholas, you played every great song in the book, and you you're, you're, gave me some nice nice props." And and it was just I was like I, 
I couldn't do nothing. I mean, what am I going to play for the guy? Um, I'm show off on Motown and, 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 and play all these licks for Michael McDonald. I wasn't going to do that. So I played every nice song in the book and just played it very cool. I love <clears> it. I love it. And that's what they want, you know, because yes, you're amazing. But with him, it was a scary, it was a scary one because, uh, that it, you know, there's nothing really to show Michael McDonald. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> you know? It's so true. It's so true. Um, I want to ask you, uh, Nicholas, what is or what has been, what has been your key to success? I would, I would totally say, um, just really loving music. I, I, I my, my profound love for music is my success. You know, I take it really serious. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mess around with it. I, uh, it's, it's a serious business and, um, you know, just put a lot of time in it, a lot of discipline. I have a lot of discipline and a lot of patience for this business and for the practicing. And I love these stuff. photos also on, on screen here. You've got like a studio shot with, um, it's more than a studio shot. Sure. It's, it's, it's maybe after your performance because you've got your tie undone and there you are with your piano and it's know a, that. what's that love i said you knew that wow that's cool it's, it wasn't great. it's great and it's such a great photo of you um but i do want to circle back how did you get to be in the background of casino oh just our friends were oh gosh uh so the, so we knew that we were it was it was actually a wedding day it was a wedding night for one of our friends who were getting married and we had tuxedos on and everything so we went out to the this this the scene was the scene was uh in at the riviera oh it was wow. it was remember the riviera well yeah. when when Sharon stone throws up the the uh, her her chips up in the air and uh she was going crazy by the uh crap crap tables or whatever but we were dressed like um, like good fellas, I guess. You know. Oh my gosh, that's so. Fun and we looked good, and it was uh, just a. Yeah. There was three guys. There was two of my friends. There was three of us. And we were just going through the Riviera, and and we seen what was going on. So we went, we went, we went, and um, we went by like like the directors to ask them, "Hey, do you guys need any um, like um, stand-ins or stand -ins? extras?" And when yeah. you guys are dressed for the part already, he said, "Come on in," you know. So. <laughs> That's that was so cool. You know, that's what's so wonderful about Las Vegas is there's so many great things happening. People are filmmaking there. Um, they're oh, doing events. We have a couple of studios coming here too. Yeah. We have a yeah. couple of studios coming here. It's very exciting. So I'm really thrilled mm -hmm. about that. Um, and I, we've got another great picture here. It looks like the Italian American Club. Um, Who is this fine and yeah. distinguished gentleman you, you're with? Another great Bob in my life. But uh, that's Bob Anderson this time. Bob Sachs is the other guy. This is Bob Anderson, to which we know, um, my family knows him from a very, very young age uh, out of Detroit, Michigan. This guy is uh, ah, just something else. Um, he's one of the great, he is the greatest, greatest singing impressionist in the world. There is nobody better than this guy. He also has his own singing voice as, as well, but he was the gentleman who was doing, um, uh, who did the Sinatra tribute show to um, at the Venetian? Oh my um, goodness, we love Sinatra. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. He he did the uh, he did, but but the the catch to this the, the catch to the show was that was that um, you know uh, the movie meeting Benjamin Button with uh, with Brad Pitt. Oh yes, I remember that. Well, you know the makeup artist that did his makeup. You know when he got older and younger, or whatever he did it. Um, the person that did his makeup did. Bob Anderson's makeup for to look to make him look like more to make him look just like Sinatra wow. in the show. So when you looked at, at in the stage, you really seen Sinatra, and it was like you were really watching Sinatra because Bob Anderson's got him down. Like, well, Bob Anderson is from with him since oh god, Bob Anderson is with Frank Sinatra since he was a kid, so he got him down pretty well. Oh, wow. um, and uh, yeah, you know, Bob Anderson has a great story, you know. Bob Anderson has a wonderful story. I wish you know. I'm, I wish you could have him have him on your podcast sometime. Yeah, I'd but love he to. Cool story. He was uh, he was just passing through. He was he was actually heading from Detroit. I uh, got into his um his his um his Volkswagen. You know those those Volkswagen uh, little um uh, 
They're like a van. I forgot what they're called. Um, but he, he, he um, jumped in. A beetle? Yeah. Yeah. So he jumped in his car and he wanted to go to California, actually, to be a, like an actor, like an actor and singer. So, but he stopped in Las Vegas and here he stops in, in, in Las Vegas. He goes to the, I think it was at the Sahara or something like that. And he goes and he goes there and there's this band having a um there's this band having a, having like a practice session. And it turns out that like um I don't want to mention any names, but the uh the headliners got into it, they were arguing and one took off. And and and, and Bob Anderson asked one of the guys asked one of the um the seating people, can, can I just sit here and watch them practice? Just sit here and watch it. So here uh they had a big fight as as Bob Anderson sitting in the seat just himself watching they had a fight and 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 they had a, 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 a and and bob um says well i can i could sing for you i could you know just, what do you mean? If this is nancy sinatra it turns out to be nancy sinatra yeah so oh she my. took him on from a young age and he um and this 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 guy has a one tremendous story i don't want to tell you it because i want him to come on your podcast and tell wow. his own story I but he, he's uh he's an amazing singer and when he comes and braces us with his talent at the club the club is you cannot hear a pin drop in the club when he comes up to sing with me and we do he he'll put on a two three hour show like nothing he his his body is filled with music he won't stop you have to tell him to stop singing <laughs> he, he just loves it so much Bob. you know but, sounds uh, like a he, super nice guy too when he comes in, the the the, the uh, he had a show there a couple of weeks ago at the club, and the place was electric. When I tell you electric, it was on. It was electric. Wow! And um, and there was so many entertainers there to come see him, like Frankie Shinta and Zoe Bowie, Dennis Bono, and everybody went to come and see him. And, and afterwards, after his, but after all the shows at, at the club, everybody comes into my room, and I get to do their after parties. So whoever's in, in in the audience at, at these shows, if they're a musician or a singer, they all come and sit in with me and sing oh, with me. Wow. So I got the greatest gig ever. Yeah, yeah. And so really nice, wonderful memories. And thank you so much for sharing that, Nicholas. And what a top class guy Bob Anderson is. So we want to say hi, Bob. Cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. There's nobody right. better than Bob and Bob but Sack. <laughs> that's right and we want to say hi to all these great uh people that we have these wonderful photos of as well speaking of um uh family extended yeah. family right <laughs> we've got some incredible um... oh geez those are the best right there right there <laughs> Chaz Palminteri and Joe Pesci but Joe Pesci I'll tell you what I um I never met a movie star of it and I never met a movie star like him to be so cool. I mean, it was like you're talking to like you're just an uncle or a grandfather or something like that. I love that. And when he when he came to the club, we gave him the Sinatra. Well, Benny Benny, my my owner, gave him the Sinatra room all to himself. We didn't want him to be where everybody was at, you know, to bother him and stuff. So we gave him the whole Sinatra room to himself with his family. It was Christmas Eve, I think it was, and um. And I told I told Benny, I said, make sure I, I meet him. Better make sure I meet him. So here he um I guess he came to hear me a little bit in the lounge and he and he and he tells his son-in-law to come and go get go get Nicholas and he wanted to meet me. So I go back to meet Joe Pesci. And the first thing I the first thing I tell him, I tell him, I said, Joe, I love you when you're acting and all this stuff, but I love you even more for your music. Because the guy is a wonderful, a tremendous guitar player. And an even better singer. Really? The guy's a, a tremendous guitar, jazz guitar player and jazz singer. So when I told him, I said, I love you for your music too, man, his eyes lit up. And oh. and he just like he's like, Where who are you? Where where are you from? I'm like, uh, is that he's like more into me than I am to I am into him. That's so here it's time, like I, I you know, we would get done with our conversation and stuff. And he says, Well, you want to take a picture? I said, Yes, Liz, I want to take a picture. Well, here, if you can see this picture. It's got like a blue, blue glare to it. A blue. Well, we have these these lights, and they're uh, like kind of blue. Oh, well, I'm. I took like ten pictures of it with my phone. Ooh. And after each picture, he says, "Well, can I see that? Can I see it?" And he says, uh, "No, no, no. Let's take another one. Let's take another one." I'm like, "Oh, sure, fine. I'll stay back here all night with you." So he says, "Um, no, no, no. Let's uh, let's not take that one. Let's take one with my camera." 
So he takes one with his camera. And um, and I I I I said, well, put on put on the flash. He says, no, 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 don't put on the flash. I said, oh, okay. He says, Nick, Nikki, he says, Nikki, if you notice, this is why I'm not out by paparazzi a lot, is because I have a bad um he has um he has something with his eyes that were you know from, from flash. He gets very dizzy from it and stuff from, from flashes and stuff. So he don't take you see Joe Pesci, he does he does not do a lot of um um uh paparazzi things or not from the flashing and all that stuff. He stays away from that stuff because because of his because his at because his eyes and he gets dizzy from the, the lights. So I said, so as soon as I said that, he said, no, 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 I don't don't put the flash on. And he told me why. And I said, wow, that's why you don't I don't he says, yes, that's why I'm never really around that sort of stuff because I don't really it hurts my eyes, it hurts my 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 way to see. So um he ends up sending me the picture from his phone. So I got his number now. I got his phone number and every year I wish him Merry Christmas. <laughs> And uh, every year he comes to the club. Wow, so. wow, 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 Nicholas. It's crazy, that's right? it's cr That's crazy. And you know what? It's, it's crazy and wonderful. And you know what? I love that he's putting his health first. Health oh, first. Oh. Isn't that brilliant that he's doing that? Because that's what we need to do, each and every one of us. And I, I think that's brilliant. So, but what an incredible um time and then that moment this is the owner of the italian american club or is it the manager is it the owner yeah, that, 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 that's one of the owners that benny spano and then there's jimmy and then there's our, the president of our club uh angelo amazing and amazing he's amazing, amazing gentleman that embraced me and and if i even if i could recall i did not know the caliber this caliber of gig that i was taking on i did not know how big i mean i heard of it i heard of it but I never really knew how big the Italian American club was and how many great artists come through there and movie stars and stuff. So I'm glad I did it because that would have probably got me a little anxious and nervous. But I'm glad I didn't know what I was getting into. And I that that enabled me to be who I be myself. Absolutely. And we felt comfortable there and we love it. Um it's a warm and and uh, inviting a comfortable atmosphere and it's a beautiful it's like the dinner theaters of old and the classy oh. aren't you know what i mean that's what these new these new um these wonderful new um these wonderful new um shows that have that are in las vegas and new platforms you know you go and sit in these chairs and you're, you cannot move you, you know even for a bathroom break you gotta wait a specific time <laughs> or to get even a cocktail or whatever if you want a cocktail in our showroom, we make it so comfortable and you can walk or you can move your arm. You could even get up and dance if you wanted to. Yes, and we have. Most, most of our shows are dinner shows. Yeah. Um, so it's just a, it's just a scene out of the Goodfellas. It totally is. Absolutely. So, you know. I love it. We love it. We felt at home there. We felt welcomed. And uh, I think it's, is it Janine that makes the reservations? Yeah, Janine Pitchford is the one who makes our reservations and handles our floor and stuff. So um, she's a doll. We love her. Hi, Janine. And yeah. um, <laughs> right. And we, we want to thank all of the uh, Italian uh, American Club uh, owners and managers and everybody who works there. They make it so great. So thank you so, so much. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Italian American Club in a little bit. Um, and who do we have here? This is a famous actor, another famous actor coming in, that's right? That's Chaz Palminteri. That's Chaz Palminteri from The Bronx Tale. <gasps> uh, that's one of my favorite films of all time. How about you? I know you, is, is it one of yours? Tell me. Oh, gosh. This, I mean, The Bronx Tale is, um, is about Chaz Palminteri. You know, it's about his life. And he also did a one man show of the Bronx Tale. Uh, you got to look it up. It's amazing. It's amazing how he puts on a one man show during the Bronx Tale. Um, but Chaz knows a lot about um, a lot about a lot of things: music, education. He's a very very smart man. Um, Joe Pesci and Chaz know they they know each other from kids. You know they're on the same they they grew up on the same street. These guys, you know, yeah, uh, they literally in New York. You know, um, but uh, you would think that the story would be more about Robert De Niro's life, but it was no, it was all about Chaz, Chaz Palminteri's life. Wow. Um, you know, because Robert De Niro's also in the, in, in the Bronx Tale. But yes. that was Robert De Niro's first um, first debut in, in, in directing. 
Oh, so good. S such an incredible. Mm -hmm. I remember watching it with my father. He wanted me to watch it. He'd already seen it. And he said, AJ, you've got to watch this film. It is phenomenal. And yes. of course, he, he loved Robert De Niro as well. So yeah, it's... I, almost met, I'm all, I almost met Robert De Niro once. I almost met him once. I I was um doing a gig with my cousin, Dakota Horvath. Dakota is a wonderful musician as well, but and I'm doing a gig with uh with with in Miami, and this was um Mickey Rourke Mickey Rourke's place. This is you know you remember Mickey Rourke? Yes, he yes. Just recently won an Academy Award for the wrestler, maybe within the past twelve years, I think. So we're doing a, a gig there, and you could see the outside. You know, it's it's a gig where you could um you're on stage, but you could see the windows because Miami's beautiful. So you could see whoever walks by. You know, so here. We're, we're playing and we see Robert De Niro and somebody else, one of his friends is walking, walking to walk in the place, getting in ready to walk in the place. But I did not know this at the time, but him and Mickey Rourke did not get along. And I don't even know why Robert De Niro was even coming to the, to the place. If he knew this, you know, Mickey Rourke was a boxer in his day. Oh, Mickey really? Rourke was, was a, was a profound, great boxer. He was a fighter back then. Wow. So on the on on one of the sets that um it was called uh it was about I forgot what the movie was about, but it was about the, the devil. It was about the devil. Him him and Mickey Rourke was in it. Robert Dino and Mickey. Well they had a, a fight on on the set. They actually had a real fight on the set, yeah. And they didn't get along ever since then. So Robert De Niro walks in, in the uh <laughs> Robert Dino walks in the door and Mickey Rourke stands up and he says, You eh, you know. You know, the talks, get out of my place. And Robert De Niro goes like this and turns around. And I said, Mickey, I wanted to meet him. <laughs> you know, we wanted to meet Robert De Niro. But I was this close to meeting Robert De Niro. Wow. Over that, yeah. Oh, so, uh, my. And, uh, my father, we were all on that gig. And that was that was something else. To see Robert De Niro stand for, he stood for shock and uh -huh. turned around and just <laughs> beat him. <laughs> Mickey Rourke's a scary guy. Mickey Rourke's a, a scary guy. He's, 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 he's intimidating. You know? I, I would have turned around too. How about you, Nicholas? <laughs> I probably if Mickey Rourke's going on you, yes. <laughs> that's that's an incredible story. Um, well, you know, maybe you'll get to meet Robert De Niro. Um, you know, maybe he'll come come by the Italian American Club. I just want to have this up here. I you know what? I, I, I have a feeling that him and Paul Anka is going to come to the club soon. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. And if they do, let me know. <laughs> I mean, if you if you know ahead of time, I don't know. But they could they could come by at a, no, a moment's notice, right, Nicholas? That's how it is sometimes. Oh, right? Frankie Valley is going to be coming by soon. He told I was I talked to him. He said he's going to oh, be coming great. by his performance. Um, but you know, Frankie Valley's like 80, 80 years old already. It's hard for him to get out after a show. Sure. So we told him we'll send there. Tiny American Club will send him a little and pick him up and Bob actually Bob De Niro um I really wish he would come to the club because he would love it he yeah. would love it and it's him you know it's him he's a it's it's his is it's his it's his ancestry and his um a lot of history there that he would know about yeah. so I hope he does come someday me too me too because he would love it and speaking of the Italian American club I hope it's okay that I uh, screenshot this and put this in, but I wanted to promote such uh, a wonderful, classy uh, dinner, um, music, and you know, it's it's performance. It's it's like the Rat Packs, the very best of the Rat Pack um, Club. Would you say is that okay to say? Well, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, AJ. So remember, I was talking about Bob Anderson. Yeah. Well, well, um, you know, Bob Anderson went from just recently in the past year and a half. Bob Anderson played at Carnegie Hall. Wow. Okay, yeah, just recently, Bob Anderson did, Bob Anderson did a, a show, a, a concert at the Carnegie Hall. Well, then he went. Then they then they called him on on a news um, on a news. I think it was Fox or something like that. And they said, and they asked him a question. They asked him, well, well, why do you go from the car, from Carnegie Hall to the Italian American Club? And Bob Anderson's answer was, well, if Frank Sinatra. Dean Martin and Sammy Davis could play there, then it's fine for me. Bingo. You've got it right there. You said it all. <laughs> you said it all. 
But um, uh, this wonderful club is um uh, is amazing. Uh, the music that is going through this club, and uh, the people that come there for a dining experience, yeah, are all you know. I mean, you either get a you either go go to a show and have a dinner show, or you come in my lounge, and and anything goes. Like I like I, I never know who, when I walk in there. I don't I don't walk in there. Thinking having the same mentality as mentality as I did the night before, because mm -hmm. you never know who's going to be there. Yeah. You never know what celebrity or what politician, who, who what politician or any anybody might be there. Yeah. So every day is a new day, and then I walk in the club. I don't know who might be there, and what might go on music musically, yeah, and and mentally. You know, it's it's wonderful. And I just want to say for um this uh podcast is also uh promoted on Spotify. So for oh. those who are listening uh through the audio version, I want to say the Italian Italian American Club established 1960 is located at 2333 East Sahara Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89104. Oh. And if you'd like to call for a reservation, uh the phone number is 702-547 three eight six six so when can people see you if they want to come see you nicholas thank you for that shout out aj thank you for the shout out for the club we all appreciate that and your work for us thank you we i am there wednesday through sunday i start 6 p.m every night i'm in the lounge in the dining room lounge um i'm there wednesday through sunday um i've been there already almost five and a half years I have a wonderful, I like like I said, when I, I did not really know too much about it. I mean, I heard about it all the time, and I always wanted to play there. To be honest, I would always think in the back of my head, you know, I I, I want to play there sometime. Yeah. But I was at Buddy V's place, Buddy Velastro's uh, at the Venetian. And I really didn't think about it too much until I go on this gig with uh, a gentleman named Mark Giovi. And I'm just playing piano, backup piano for Mark Giovi. And... And I think Mark had a had a rough night at uh, singing wise, so he said, "Nick, can you take over?" And so I started I started doing my thing, and I see this guy running from the lounge to the to the to the showroom, oh and he's he's saying, hey. and this gentleman's name is Ben Spano. He says, "Where did you come from? Where do you where where were you? I mean, I never seen you in town. Where have you been?" <laughs> I mean, you know, for a piano player singer. I kick bass as well, play play bass and play piano. It's hard to find some piano player singers nowadays. You know, it's either you're just a singer or you're just a piano player. But um, I'm lucky, I'm fortunate to have both. You do it all. <laughs> so he comes, he comes running to me. He says, "Where are you? Where are you from? What are you doing?" I mean, can you do a party next week for me? And I was like, "Yeah." I mean, this was during COVID. This was during um, um, shutdowns and stuff. So I said, yes, you know, let, let, let's do it. And then then as time goes, like a week, two, three weeks go by, he says, well, we're going to open up the lounge back again because the lounge was closed. It was closed off. The reason why we were using the showroom is because we were able to space out tables. And during COVID, you know, you had to space out stuff. And it, you, wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to operate if you weren't at a, like the 12 feet separation from each table. And, and, and the fact, the also fact, is that we had a stage that separated um the stage from from the guest like 40 feet long so we were able to, co to continue our the, the serving dinner and also have a live band because i don't know if you know during that time they shut down all the bands because of you know all that stuff so so he uh he offered me the full-time gig in the lounge where just before that jerry tiffy the wonderful jerry tiffy was that was his that, that is still his lounge i still call it the jerry tiffy lounge because the lounge, I came after him. And if I would have known more about it, about who this lounge and, 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 and Jerry Tiffy and Frankie Shinta and Zoe Bowie would come in, and I probably would have been like, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't know about it. And, 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 you know, I just, I guess my Nicholas Cole just kicked in. That's and, it. That's right, Nicholas. Your Nicholas Cole, and you, and you're right in the groove and you fit in perfectly. And uh, like I said, it's a top class, uh, classy uh, place. So please check it out. I loved it there. And I'm going to go again next time I'm in Vegas. So put that on your bucket list. Um, I did want to say what I did want to ask you, what challenges as an artist have you overcome so far? Well, um, I was on American Idol season four. And 
And, uh, you know, Carrie Underwood was on that. And, you know, I thought I, I just thought I could have done better. You know, I, I thought I could have done a lot better. I got down to like top 30, but here's the kicker is when I, when I got cut, I came home and my wife and I have, um, my wife and I end up having twins together. So twins and one womb or over uh, fame, you know, maybe that that kind of fame wasn't meant for me. I probably maybe would have been dead at a hotel or something like that. You know, just maybe that wasn't meant for me. But um, but what I do, what I do is what I do now. You know, I'm so happy that when I when I'm playing a great song like Moon River or Two for the Road and I'm watching people conversate and, and enjoy the dinner without screaming at each other. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that, 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 I have a profound love for that. I Absolutely. really do. I love watching people interact and, and enjoy themselves and hear the music, you know, kind of there, but over, you know, just right there. And then I do get my times to shine, but when it's the right time, but when it's six, seven, seven o'clock, eight o'clock dinner time, I play nice, beautiful songs so that people can enjoy themselves because I'm not, you know, it's not the Nicholas Cole room. It's, 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 it's also a dining room and we have to sell you know, we have to sell food as well. You know? And it's delicious food, by the way. And you yeah, serve, yeah. Um, you have spaghetti and meatballs there. You have fish, you have mm-hmm. all wonderful salads, anything you want. Um, it, it's really, really divine. So, well, Jimmy, Jimmy really, really keeps his head into that. I mean, I don't know. I see this man putting 12 hour shifts in, in the kitchen. And I just, when he comes out of here, I'm like, Jimmy, wow. I don't know how you do that. These, you know, they, they um they uh they actually give us a lot of um you know when we walk in that club for that for for Jimmy and, and Benny and Angelo, they were walking in the club to, to to work for them you know we work for them and happily you know and lovingly you know I can 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 ask for any better guys than these than these gentlemen that run this club. Absolutely, you've got the best, and you are you the know, best. The fact that they all love music. They're all into music because the yeah. the, the club was 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 the club was established around around music, you know, and entertainment. Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, you know, Dean Martin, you know, so we're living up to our expectations. Absolutely. uh, Over at the club. So very, very happy with that. Me too. And tell us about the Frank Sinatra room. There's a big picture. I've been in there and I've had my photo taken um, in the Frank Sinatra room. There's a big picture of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. And they're all kind of like, you know, having their hands out like cheers and like greeting you. Tell us about that. Is that is that kind of a private thing or or no, you could you could you could book the room for your own for your for your own pleasure for whatever we also have a grand piano in there. It also has a full full bar. And every time I go, I mean every time um there's something always going on in there. I mean, whether it's a a wedding or a bar mitzvah or a, or even we hold all kinds of stuffs in there. And we just finished our patio. Our patio has an amphitheater out there now. Oh wow! We have a wonderful amphitheater out there, and um, we hold bands out there as well, and barbecues, and and um, <clears throat> you know musical nights outside under the stars. So then, and and then the Sinatra room is just we just had a wonderful um uh a guitar night in there. We had a guitar night in there on I think it was Friday night, and I walk in there and there's a whole show going on there, literally a painted show <laughs> going on in there because we could use the the Sinatra room as a showroom as well. Yes. A grass and piano and then we have our showroom and then the lounge <clears throat> and we and benny finds a way to utilize all those rooms he's just the, the idea man he's got a lot of great ideas and he keeps the music flowing um and jimmy keeps all the great food going and the staff and angelo is our president um and just making a wonderful social italian american social club for all our even you don't have to be italian to be a to, to be a, a, a club member and you do not have to be a member to come have dinner you know, so I'm so proud of my 18.3% Italian. That's cool. That's a lot, actually. <laughs> Believe it or not, some people think that they're full blooded Italian, and then you go for that test, and it's like 10%, 5% Italian. <laughs> you know? I'm so proud of it. So proud. Good. That's a lot. For, that's a lot of percentage, actually. Believe it or not. Thank you. Thank you so what much. Other, um, what, what other ethnicity are you? Um, I've got um, 2.2% percent Chinese dye. I've got German, I've got French, Scandinavian, and uh, British Isles. 
So yeah. I've got a, a lot of, I'm kind of Heinz 57. I'm kind of a mixture. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is my, my wife, my wife and I are, my wife is a hundred percent Slovak and I'm a hundred percent Slovak. Yeah. I love so, that. I love that. And you come from, you've got great DNA and it's, it's just so fabulous to get to know you. I'm having such a fun time learning. And I know our audience um, is going to enjoy this immensely. And speaking of the Italian American club and the, another fun moment, check it out. You, this is Tony. This is Tony, oh, Tony Orlando. Tony Orlando. Oh, yeah. Tony. He was just there two weeks ago. And it's funny thing is, is that uh, Tony, Tony Orlando just did his retirement. He's, he retired. Re, he's doing his retirement shows. As we speak, Tony Orlando is doing this. Um, his last show in Las Vegas was at the Sun Coast. And here he, he comes in, right? Well, he comes in, he tells Jimmy, he says, I, I, I'm going to come in, you know, Jimmy, just, but I just don't want to sing and this stuff. You know, I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to. So here the place is ecstatic that, that he's there. There's people going by him, taking pictures with him and he's loving it. He's loving it. He's getting out of his shell a little bit. I could see through the corner of my eyes. Okay. 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 I'm like this, you know, this is cool. So he, um, so he, uh, so I guess asks me to play Tyrell, Tyrell Ribbon, you know, that song. They asked for me to play it. I said, no, 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 I can't play it. I can't. It, it, the, the, he's right there. Tony Orlando's right there. They know it. You know, they said, yeah, play it for him. Play it for him. I said, no way. I can't. But what I did was I did put it on for like a, I did play it for like a second. And he, he went like, he turned around. He just, <laughs> he, he heard it. He heard it. And he, he pointed to him. So he says, can I come up? I said, yes, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Orlando. And he could not believe it the whole there was like 200 people in there and singing his song without him seeing he was he was in total shock that he said how, am I, how, how have i never really been here before and you guys love me so much here and i said yes tony we love you and i didn't even think you'd want to come up here but thank you for coming up here and um just we're really we're really thankful for the for the acknowledge the acknowledgement of all the great musicians and entertainers that come through there and this place is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the world, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's wonderful. And and look how happy Tony is in this picture. He's pointing at you. Uh, you're saying he's the man. He's saying... Uh, yeah, he is the, he's the legend. Yeah. You know, totally a legend. You're right. But in a second... Go ahead. Go ahead, AJ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The second photo? The second photo is uh, we're on stage and he's singing... And there's so many people in front of us taking pictures. This is just from from somebody. I think somebody just sent me this picture. But the the the, the other gentleman that's in that picture is uh, E.C. Adams, one of my great dear friends. He is a wonderful, wonderful entertainer. And um, I hope for you to ever have him on your podcast as well. Uh, but E.C. Yeah. Adams has a wonderful story. And he just did his show um, Sunday night at the club, a tribute to Prince and Michael Jackson. This guy is one of the hardworking entertainers in this town, and I wanted him to have a. I wanted him to have a sold out show, and I put my. I just every day I call him. I said, "You coming to the club tonight? You coming to the club tonight?" Because you know you come into my room. You're not in my room, but the, the lounge, the club, and you promote it. You can promote the club. You know that's how you. That's how you uh, get tickets for the show. You're able to buy tickets there. You know, so I call up. Part of my, I would say half of my job is promoting the entertainers that are going to be in the showroom, getting them up to, to play. And, and, I, and I talk, I, I talk with them and say, you know, it's a dinner show. It's the price is this, the date is this. So it's up to me to have all that info in my head. I love it. Oh, so, um, that's, you know, that's part of, that's fun, fun part of my job. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And isn't it fun to promote uh, wonderful entertainment and talent. Um, it, it's it's what we're supposed to do. This is what we're we're to you know. This is why we're here. It's why I'm here. On the share the stage. Yes. Yes. The stage. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so this, went, I'm sorry. Go so, ahead. No, I was just saying. You know, a lot of some musicians turned their turned their brain off from saying. You know, some people say, "Oh, I know all music. I know everything about music. I know well." There's Mexican music, there's Brazilian music, there's Latin music, there's Arabic music. So don't ever say that you know all music because you're putting yourself at a high on a high pedestal by saying that. And when these musicians come up, 
you never know what you can learn from them. You never know. I, I can learn a new riff or I can learn a new song or I can learn a new. So I'm always into it, intuitive on, you know, I'm, all, I'm into it. I'm into it because you never know what I can learn. And there's never ending learning in this, in the music business, you know, being a musician, you never, there's never. And when you say you know it all, that's when you don't. I love that humbleness, that modest philosophy. It's absolutely beautiful. And I share that with you. Thank you so much for saying that. You're a great example uh, of a fine professional artist. And uh, we appreciate you so, so much, Nicholas. Um, thank you, thank you. Thank you for, for explaining that. It's, it's important. Now, we've got a great photo here. Is this you leaning up against the piano? And then we've got you on the stage of Dennis Bono. This is at yeah. South Point, right? Tell us, yeah, tell us. The famous, legendary Dennis Bono and, the, and his wonderful 24 years of doing that Dennis Bono show. Uh, he is just something else. He's a force to be reckoned with. So um, every week he holds the show on Thursday afternoons at the Suncoast. And whoever uh, he has the greatest of entertainers on this show, and they and it's a great show to go to because if you want to if you want to see what's going on around town, every and the funny thing is, every, like if if like there's six guests on the show, like I guarantee you, there's two guests that are having a show at our show. So every week he's like, um, like uh, EC Adams, where's your show at the Italian American Club? You know, so the whole the whole. Uh, the whole audience says it with him. So <laughs> that's funny. It's just funny. That, I mean, but but Dennis is a true class act. And he, you know, Frank Sinatra said it himself. I'm I'm handing the torch over to, to Dennis Bono. And Dennis carried that, carries that torch still to today. Along with the greats of like Bob Anderson, Buddy Greco, um, Tony Orlando. You know, these are all the top-notch guys that I have tremendous respect for and humble to even be in the same presence as them, you know? So when these guys come into the place, I'm like, I'm just listening. I'm listening. I'm having a blast. It's I'm amazing. having a blast on stage, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, um, I'm thrilled for you. This is so exciting. And, you know, cause these are the greats, like you said, they're legends. And uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know Frank Sinatra basically handed the baton, the legacy onto Dennis Bono. I didn't know that. What a fabulous story. Thank you for sharing that. Dennis, Dennis is uh, Frank Sinatra's protege, kind of, you know? Yeah, I'd say, I'm not even kind of, it's true. It is. Um, Dennis Bono, uh, Dennis as a, you wonder, Jilly, Jilly was Frank Sinatra's um, bodyguard. Jilly, Jilly, uh, Jilly Rizzo has a profound, uh, uh, he's he's a, he's a big presence, but uh, he has a big, big lot to do with Dennis, you know, and uh, his upbringing with music and stuff. And beautiful, and beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow, I just love that. Love, love, love that. And then this picture here, you're leaning up against a piano. Is that one of your uh, earlier photo? That's the that's the best picture. I think that's the best picture I got because let me tell you something about this picture. This is the, this is the this is Frank Sinatra's house in Palm <gasps> Springs. That's Frank Sinatra's up. So if you can look closely to this picture, you'll see behind me is a um, is a uh, a record player. Okay, that record player is 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 there since the the sixties. That record player is there since the sixties in that house. It's a and it works perfectly fine. So the first time I ever go into this, I played it like a dozen times, but this particular time I, I went there to take go a little earlier so I could take photos and stuff. So um, that record player is unbelievable. It's a, it's got such great history behind it. Um, you could you could pull it up on on some. You could Google it and, and YouTube it. But anyway, so that's that's Frank Sinatra's piano. And then when I walk into this to do this gig at his house, they give me his bedroom as my um, dressing room. So I'm looking in the mirror in his bathroom, and I'm thinking, my God, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy. Who knows who looked in this mirror? And then, and in and in, in the in this, listen, this is a great story, AJ. In the sink, in in the sink, they got the old sinks, you know, those old sinks from the sixties. Well, there's a chip on the end of the, uh, on, on the end of, on the edge of the um, of the sink. So I'm like playing with it, and I asked one of the, I said one of the directors that were there, I said, "What is this from?" What you know? 
what is this from? Uh, she says, uh, it's a rough story, but but Ava Gardner and um, <laughs> but Ava Gardner through, I guess, Frank Sinatra was, was in his room with somebody else, I guess. I don't know if I should be saying this story or not, but they had a fight in that bathroom and she threw she threw something at the other lady and it hit the, the sink and there's a crack in the sink from from 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> and I mean, it's just funny. And that's where I met Francis Ford Coppola as well, too. Wow. Um, wow. That's a lot of history. Uh, she must have been so upset. <laughs> Yes. She was livid, and she and she it must have been a, a heavy something heavy to to chip the, you know, because that's a it, isn't the sink isn't the sink really it's like out of granite, it's from isn't 50s, it? The fifty six, yes, totally. And I and I, I, I said, so what? The, why? Who did this? That's terrible. And I said, no, no, that she said, no, that's history, sir. And I'm saying like I'm like um what do you mean this is history? She said um Ava Gardner did that. She threw that at at some she threw something at like her hill or so, I don't know what it was, but you know, they're they're like you know fighting over Frank Sinatra and who wouldn't want to? Who that's right. <laughs> so amazing! What an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that. I love this picture. Uh, I love all the all your pictures. This one is so classic and how it must have felt so so great you know just just looking at that i see all the knobs and everything and there might be yes. some albums below it like yes. storage yes. how cool is that nicholas cool. guess what his, his his pool is is designed to, to look like as is, is designed out of a grand piano so his pool looks like a grand piano oh my god so cool yes. beautiful Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> well, this is so much fun. Oh my gosh. I went, I went back to your twins. I hope that's all right. Sorry about that. Hi. No, no, God. I, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I got, I got the best. I got the best of both worlds. I got a great family, a wonderful family, a wonderful wife yes, you do. who puts up with my stuff every day and day in and day out as she slaves over our children. And every day, uh, I mean, just every day to have this house, keeping up the house and Keeping up with the kids, thinking of the school is just a job by itself, you know. Yeah. Like I said, they all go to different schools and stuff, and her job's twenty thousand more times harder than mine. It's so great to hear how much you love your wife, how much you appreciate her, and uh, you two are so blessed. You're a great team. Yeah. You have a beautiful family, and you're yeah. doing things the right way. So I'm so proud of you. You're a you're as a couple as a family you're a fine example for others to follow and be inspired by i just want to say that and um really sincerely and if if i do have a question if you could be remembered for one thing in your life nicholas what would it be for one thing in my life um i just that i want to be a good father um as a good father and a good husband the music, music to me is is uh, means a lot to me, but it's not everything, you know. My family is uh, is a lot more important than than uh, my music, you know. Um, I got you got to understand. I got I, I got to raise four boys. We have four boys and one girl. We want these, uh, and everybody asks me, you know, why don't you show your kids music? Why don't you show your kids music? You know, and they get mad at me when I when, when I reply back to them because it's a terrible answer. It really is a terrible answer, but I don't show the music because the music business is a very rough business. And I would know if they were interested in music or not, you know, to put in 15 hour days. I would know 100% if they were interested in doing that. But I want them to be better than me. I want them to be doctors, lawyers. My, you gotta understand my family come, are, are come strictly from music. My father, bought homes from being a musician. And then it's, you struggle too. You struggle too as being a musician. I mean, when when think about it, AJ, when when you need to cut costs at a restaurant or at a club, what is the first thing that they're gonna they're, that they're they're gonna they're gonna let go? Not the dishwasher. They need this the dishwasher. They they don't need the music. So the first thing to go is music, entertainment. Well we'll let go of the music for a few months and we'll get back on our feet. That's the mentality of every owner. And that, but that's where we're lucky. We're lucky to have a guy like Benny and Jimmy and Angelo that believe in music and entertainment, and and these wonderful entertainers and and 
and put side by side music, uh, entertainment, and food, the dining experience and food. And if you just get a wonderful dining experience there, and I'm uh, very thankful for that, you know. They have it all. And I love that you love your family so much. And I just have to go back to this Disneyland um, because that's coming up, right? That's going to be coming up soon. I'm going to go and take my daughter soon and my wife. We're going to go. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we're, we're starting to plan it from now. But um, I love I, I love going to California. You know, California is great. Um, we love going to Laguna Beach, to the beach there. Um, and then we go to Disneyland and Universal Studios and but um, coming back to Vegas is just when you come back in the there's so many great things and big things that are happening in Las Vegas now. We got the Hard Rock Hotel opening it up, opening up soon. We have a baseball team that's coming here. We have the new Fountain Blue that just opened up. Um, there's just so many great things happening in Las Vegas that that evolve around entertainment. Because there was a little short period of time that really people didn't think about entertainment here, and they forgot that Las Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Now it is. We came back full circle on this. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And Las Vegas, there is only one Las Vegas, and it's a great place. Yes. We love yes. it. And um, would you say that your favorite gig so far, or residency, is what you're doing right now? Oh, my dream gig, by far. Yeah. There's. Um, I never backed up so many. I never had uh, musically. I never. I haven't had so much fun. Uh, and and musically in my life, I mean, to play behind Bob Anderson, and Tony Orlando, and Dennis Bono, and all these big guys, and just to play the piano behind them and listen to them, and and uh, there's there's no getting better than that for me in my book, you know. Michael McDonald, God, Michael McDonald was there, and um, <laughs> uh, that was that was crazy. But a lot of great, great entertainers come through there, and I'm very lucky to show off my talent. And you know, but you know, there's there's a fine line, like there's a silver lining there because you gotta, um, you, you really do. You can't have that mentality and going to work and go like this. Oh, uh, oh, he's gotta go to work, smiling every day. That's what I was taught by um by one of my first agents I ever had in my life, um, Mr. Freddie Montilla out of South South Florida, who gave me my first really big gig was playing for Disney Disney World uh, on, on the Magic and Wonder cruise lines. So it's just a really quick story, you know, and I won't go too far into it. But anyways, I was at my 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 first gig was this little gig across the street from from our home, from our house in Coral Springs, Florida. My dad was playing it once in a while, but he was in a little bigger gig in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. So he says to me, Nick, why don't you just uh, learn a few songs, bring the music book with you, and just play piano for for at, at, at this little called place called Hobos, right? Hobos place. It was like a fish place. So um, so I'm this I'm like 18 years old, 17 and a half, 17 years old, playing in this in this little fish place, cross street from my house. So there was this one day that um, I wanted to be out with my friends. You know, I wanted to be out with my friends, but I had to go to this to this gig and play. You know, so I'm I'm playing there and I'm playing, I'm like down and I'm playing like this. So here the uh the server comes up to me, says, Um, there's a gentleman here that wants wants you to come over to the table. Uh there's two gentlemen there, want you to come over to the table and say hello. And um I go over to the table, he tells me, What's wrong? <laughs> he said, Tell me straight up what's wrong. I said, I don't know, I'm just I'm all right, you know, I'm just a little down. I wanna I, I miss my friends or whatever. Cause remember I told you I moved from from Las Vegas to um back to South Florida where I knew nobody. So I was a little down and out. And he says, well, I'm going to change your mood in about two seconds. I said, what do you what do you mean? I said, well, this guy I'm sitting next to, the guy I'm sitting next to right now, he is the director of musical entertainment for Disney World. <gasps> well, I dropped my jaw dropped. <laughs> My jaw, my jaw dropped. I, and I could, he says, well, how would you like to, how would you like to go on to Disney, Disney cruise lines and do a six month turn? Oh my gosh. And I accepted it. And that's, that's where another thing too, I was like, uh, then I, I was about 19, I was 19, 20 years old at the time. Wow. And um, that's when I really, that's when really um, things fall, started to fall into place. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I got off that boat. Incredible. So would you say the three most influential people in your life can I guess your dad, your grandpa, and then is there a third one or 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 is there a different three? 
Well, it's my dad, of course, my dad. My dad, what um, what my dad has forgotten in music, it would take me a lifetime to learn. What my dad forgot musically, I, it would take me some time to learn. You know, then and uh, of course I gotta say, you know, influential people. We got Bob Sachs. Bob Sachs is one took showed me a lot about this business and helped me and and just genuinely loved me. You know. Didn't have any um very didn't have any um you know that jealousy factor there, you know. And just took me in, said I have something and I'll be in this town for a long time. And I was only 21 at the time. And I started Caesar's Palace and I was there from 2002 to 2008 with a wonderful with a wonderful great bass player Anthony uh, Tony Slapsky and Chris Rose. Tony Rose and Chris Rose. Uh they took me in as well. I was a young kid, and these then they're, 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 these guys are older gentlemen playing, and I'm of course making mistakes and stuff. But they took took me in and showed me a lot about music and Chris Rose and Tony Rose and and their brother that has passed, Gary, was a wonderful musician. Um, Ryan Rose, they're all wonderful. What a great family of music, and they're from Detroit, Michigan. So uh, you cannot. I, I was being brought up by some of the great musicians of uh, uh, in the world, you know come out of Detroit, Michigan. So I'm very lucky and blessed and I was right places at right time some sometimes. Right definitely, places. definitely, Nicholas. Right, right timing, right place, everything working out perfectly. What um, would be one piece of advice for aspiring singers and entertainers? We kind of touched on this a little bit, but was it did you say it was like never give up one thousand percent talk to talk to us about that i would say i would say either you're in it or you're, or you're not either you got one you can't have one foot in one foot out it's you got to have two feet in in this business and in this music you cannot say oh i'm just gonna um, no you gotta you, if, if if you're like say if you're an aspiring musician that wants to play in las vegas but you're living in philadelphia you cannot live in philadelphia and want to play in las vegas you need to be in las vegas 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you know? Um, and that's when I made that decision to move here. You know, I made that decision to move here with kids and yeah. I have twins, you know, I have a beautiful wife and yeah. we moved here. Uh, I moved here to, to play the Caesar's Palace, Caesar's Palace gig and I was there almost eight years. Wow. But, <laughs> but you have to, you cannot, you cannot go into this thing thinking like, um, there's going to be some, there's going to be 14 hour day practicing. There's going to be, there's going to be a lot of times where you can't go out with your friends. And there was many times when my, my when I'd be going on the bus to school and my, my friends would pull up to me um, with all the kids in the car and they're, we're, hey, we're going fishing. Everybody is, oh, we're all going fishing. We're all going out. We're ditching school. And I would tell them, it's not that I don't want to go with you guys. It's just I have obligation at the school. You know, I, I'm the I piano know. player at the school. I'm I'm the piano player at the jazz band. I'm in choir. I can't do that to my to my to my colleagues and my 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 my, my teachers. Right. Where right. do you see yourself five years from now, Nicholas? Five years from now, I see myself at the same place, same spot, same time, same owners. Great. Mm -hmm. And with my and just uh, uh just hoping that my my kids could could have an education yes and um and and do and do better than I could ever do and be something that's, and they will um, that's why I when I say I never show my kids music it's just because um like I said our my family has been nothing but music for the past decade a hundred years hundred years hundreds of years and it would nice it would be nice to see maybe um somebody different and resonate some, something different other than being a musician but if they were interested in it i would totally give them 100 100 percent of my attention but i know i just know that they're not mm -hmm. i love that answer. they love music they love music but just to, oh, yeah. not, to, not to the point to make it a career you know like how right I yeah and nicholas thank you for that what's a common myth about being a singer or pianist or songwriter that it's easy. That it's easy. It's not easy. A myth, you know, oh, everybody says, oh, oh, I could sing. I can sing. I could do that. I could play the piano. Well, just go ahead and try. 
just go in and try to sing a song. And you know what? It takes a lot of energy to sing a song and, and, and a lot of energy and, and it takes a lot out of you, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and there's, there's a myth behind that. Oh, people always say, oh, you're just, a, you're a musician. You know, you're not a construction worker, like, a, you know, working 20, 20 hour days. Well, there's, there's a hard part. There's, there's the mental, the psyche thing about it too. Always being, oh, did I play that song right? Or did I do that? Okay, did the people like me? Um, you know, there's a lot of men- mental things that go along with music too, you know? Absolutely. Um, my heart message is a quote, your graciousness is what carries you. It isn't how old you are, how young you are, how beautiful you are, or how short your skirt is. What it is, is what comes out of your heart. If you are gracious, you have won the game. And this quote is from singer and musician Stevie Nicks, who I absolutely adore. She's one of my uh, idols. Um, She's inspiration. I think she's in her 70s now and she's still performing. She's Mm -hmm. a rock and roll superstar and a legend. And that's my heart message for today mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. to you what, what do you think of that nicholas I love it. it's so true if that is spot on spot on what she's that, that, that. wow yeah graciousness yeah. you know it's like holding on to kindness you know it's so important okay over to you what's your heart message for the world this week nicholas my heart message is uh geez um music is what feelings sound like it's so true. It's so true. And we need that so much in so many world. wonderful ways. So thank you one so much. That, it's the one thing that everybody can connect on without seeing color or anything. Yes, know? yes, yes. And uh, I love that so much. Thank you for saying that. It's beautiful how you said that. I love that quote. And it means so much to me. And I, and I feel the same way. And Nicholas, before we close the show, I want to ask you, is there anything else you'd like to uh, promote or give a shout out to or a thank you? Well, I want to thank you for having me and thank you to your husband also as, as helping us out with the, with the, with the zoom and all that stuff. But I want to thank you for having me so much and, ah, and all the lovely guests that you, that you uh, have on your show. Thank you for what you do for the entertainment community. And um, I just want to say, just continue to thank you and thank you for, for putting me on the show tonight and uh, putting a shout out to the tiny American club and, also to my beautiful wife, Danielle, and my kids, my children, Bronson, Dallas, Tatum, Wyatt, and Everett, all cowboy names, if you may add, Bronson, Dallas, Tatum, Wyatt, and Everett. So that's five, five kids with all cowboy names, um, no Italian names. Could have been Vinny, Tommy, and Johnny, and Nikki, and <laughs> you know, we went for good, strong uh, cowboy names, you know? They're beautiful. They are beautiful. And uh, we live in the West, so it's very yes. out of <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Nicholas. You have been an absolute delight and a wonderful guest. And thank I you. want you to come back on again in the future. And so uh, until next time, Nicholas, uh, I just want to say, Arrivederci. See you later. Arrivederci. Take it easy. Forget about it. You know what I mean? Come and see us at the club Wednesday through Sunday, 6 p.m. Or catch a dinner show anytime you like. Go on to the IACvegas.com and you can check out everything that's going on at the club.